This is Katherine Nightingale at Chattanooga State Community College, and this is video two for the section 10.3 on polar coordinates. In the first video, we discussed how to change points from polar to Cartesian coordinates and from Cartesian to polar. In this video, we'll discuss how to change equations from one coordinate system to the other. Recall that we have these four basic identities for switching between polar and Cartesian. x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, and tangent of theta equals y over x. We want to use these four equations as appropriate to switch from r and theta to x and y, or vice versa. In this first one, we want to replace the polar equation with an equivalent Cartesian equation, meaning we want to switch to x and y. First of all, let's look at tangent of theta. We have a direct identity for that. It's y over x. Now secant theta, we have to remember from trig, is 1 over cosine theta. And we can figure out an xy equation for cosine theta, or at least an xr equation. So I'll start by just replacing the tan theta with y over x and the secant with 1 over cosine theta. So r equals 4 y over x times 1 over cosine theta. Next, I want to multiply both sides by cosine theta, because if I do that, I see that I'm going to get an r cosine theta on the left-hand side, which I can replace with x. So I have r cosine theta equals 4y over x, and r cosine theta is x. So I have x equals 4y over x, and now I just solve for y. So I have x squared equals 4y, and y equals 1 fourth x squared. So there's my Cartesian equation of the original polar equation. Now notice this is just going to be a parabola in the xy plane. So you can look at that original polar equation for tangent theta times secant theta, and you can know that any polar equation in that exact form will end up being a parabola. Next, we want to replace the polar equation with an equivalent Cartesian equation again. And we have r equals 5 over the quantity sine theta minus 2 cosine theta. What I want to do first is get rid of the denominator, because I know if I multiply both sides by the denominator, I'll get r sine theta minus 2r cosine theta, and I have identities for both r cosine theta and r sine theta. So I'll cross multiply, and I get r sine theta minus 2r cosine theta equals 5. Now I plug in my identities. r sine theta is y, and r cosine theta is x. So I have y minus 2x equals 5, and if I solve that for y, I get y equals 2x plus 5. So now the really cool thing about switching between the polar and the Cartesian is now we can look at that original polar equation, r equals 5 over sine theta minus 2 cosine theta, and we know that it's just a line. So it's a pretty powerful tool being able to switch back and forth between polar and Cartesian so that you can picture the shape of the graph without actually having to plug it in to a graphing calculator. Okay, here's the last one where we want to replace the polar equation with an equivalent Cartesian equation. This one is a little more complicated because we can't manipulate it in order to get a direct identity to use. 
So what we want to do is figure out that cosine theta can be written as x over r and sine theta can be written as y over r. So we'll use those two replacements in order to get the new equation r equals negative 2x over r plus 2y over r. Now we always want to get rid of denominators, so we'll multiply both sides by r, and we'll have r squared equals negative 2x plus 2y. Now we do have a direct identity for r squared. r squared is x squared plus y squared. So we'll have x squared plus y squared equals negative 2x plus 2y. Now our equation is in Cartesian coordinates now. It only has x's and y's. But it's not in a form that we're used to or that we can picture the graph of. So what we want to do is get that equation into standard form. And whenever the x and the y are both squared, that will involve completing the square. Okay, so get it into standard form. So we have x squared plus 2x plus y squared minus 2y equals 0. We just moved everything to the left hand side. And now we complete the square. So we'll add 1 to the x terms and 1 to the y terms. And we have to add the same thing on the other side of the equal sign and then factor, so we get x plus 1 squared plus y minus 1 squared equals 2. So now this is a form that we can recognize. This is a circle, and it has a radius of square root of 2 and a center of negative 1, 1. So we've changed into Cartesian coordinates in a form that we know the standard equation of. Now look at your original polar equation and take note of the format that would give you a circle. For our last example, we're going to go the other way. We'll start with a Cartesian equation, or an equation in Cartesian coordinates, and we want to switch to a polar equation that expresses r in terms of theta. So what I want to do first is multiply out the y minus 2 quantity squared or expand my equation. So I'll have x squared plus y squared minus 4 squared plus 4 equals 4. So I expanded the y minus 2 squared and now I'll use any identities that I have. So x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. That's a direct one I can plug in. And y is equal to r sine theta. So I plug in those identities. And also the 4's on the left and right of the equal sign will cancel each other. So now I have r squared minus 4r sine theta equals 0. And I want to solve this for r so that I have my equation of r in terms of theta. So r squared equals 4r sine theta. I'm going to divide both sides by r. And I get r equals 4 sine theta. So now compare the two equations, your Cartesian and polar. We can see the Cartesian is a circle with center 0, 2, and radius 2. When I have r equals 4 sine theta in polar, it would be the same shape. It would be a circle with radius 2 and center 0, 2. So just make a little mental note of the format of the polar equation for a circle. 
That concludes switching equations back and forth between polar and Cartesian coordinates.